Okay, I'm gonna show you how to create something like this. There's a couple different ways to do it. Um, the point of this video is to make sure that you create a route that um, is compatible with the airport database that Garmin provides. Now, Garmin doesn't have all of the airports that you would see on a sectional in its database. Like this guy down here, the S-Bar Ranch, uh, it's a private uh, airport. You won't find those in the Garmin database. If you happen to put those in your route uh, by, by using the identifier for that restricted airport, the Garmin's not going to know what it is. Uh, now, Garmin does this because... Uh, when you're flying through a congested area where there's a lot of uh, airstrips, airports, uh, they try to uh, create a view when you're flying that's not very cluttered. So they don't put every single airstrip uh, that's available on the screen. They try to keep it a little bit decluttered for you. So let's go through this. This is the route we're going to create. Uh, you can see some of them here have latitude and longitudes. Some of them have an airport identifier like U87, um, K-Sun, K-Man. So let's go through and create this the right way so that the Garmin will understand what it is you're trying to import into, uh, uh, in our case, the Garmin G1000. Now let's clear this out. Now, if, if you're going to create a complicated um, route like that that's got a lot of different uh, waypoints in it, it's a lot easier to do it in flight and then convert it and upload it into the Garmin as it is to sit at the Garmin, the G1000 in our case, and twist knobs and push buttons and try to get all of these things entered in here. This is a much easier interface to use. So let's create a route. It says tap here. We're going to start by just typing in K-Man because that's the identifier for the Nampa Airport. Okay? Um, and it takes us basically right to here. It starts out here. Here's K-Man. Now the next place we're going to go to is uh, uh, in that route was the... Uh, Anderson Reservoir so that's right here and they wanted to take some pictures of the dam so I'm going to press and hold on the dam and notice that one of the things in this list in the side paddle here is something called Anderson Dam and you go well okay I'm going to choose that because that's accurate I'm, that's exactly where I want to fly to well Foreflight knows what Anderson Dam is and where it is, but Garmin doesn't know anything about this waypoint labeled Anderson Dam. So you're going to run into a problem. The Garmin's not going to understand what that is. So go up here, just select the uh, lat long, and add that into your route. So now the next one is uh, Mormon Reservoir. That was in the plan here let's see uh, let's that was south of Fairfield here's Mormon Reservoir right here and see the black line there that means it's a dam so let's press and hold there on that spot and sure enough it finds a label Mormon R okay you don't want to select that because Garmin doesn't know about that either so come up here again select the lat long and you can see the route now has completed over to there. Now the next place he went to was um, Sun Valley. And what I would normally do is I would just type in K-Sun because that's the airport identifier for Sun Valley. And you can see now that the route has extended out to here. Now, I don't remember exactly where up here he went uh, next, but he ended up uh, uh, going to U87. 
or yeah, U87, which is basically a grass strip called Smiley Creek. I can't remember if there is maybe another uh, spot here, but uh, you're kind of getting the idea. So let's type in U87. And you'll find out that the Garmin knows about U87 as an airport identifier. Then he came down here and he had an intermediate spot here. And let's say he went, he flew down uh, to this peak here, near that peak. Well, there's a lot of things identified here that you could select, but the, uh, the recommendation again is to select up that very top, that latitude longitude. Then he went over to Atlanta, which has got an airport identifier, 55H. Okay. You can uh, either press this and hold it and scroll through here, but you see you won't find anything that shows 55H. So let's close this and just use the airport identifier. As it turns out, 55H is in the Garmin database. I did the test on this before I did this video. I wasn't positive whether or not, um, uh, whether or not uh, Atl Atlanta was in there. Let's see, I wanna try to get the scrolling going here. So you're kinda getting the feel for what I'm doing here. And I don't remember exactly where he went, but uh, let's just say he went back to Cayman. We'll, we'll complete that that way. You're getting the idea of what you're supposed to do. So that, that then takes us back to uh, where we started from. And uh, so that's basically the route that he had in there. And you can see some have ide airport identifiers, some have just waypoints. On, on his, he had these two had labels called uh, Anderson Dam and Mormon R. Uh, don't use those because that upload or that import will fail. Use user waypoints. Use the very top thing that comes up in this side panel here. Always use the lat long up here and none of the labels down here. Now you're going to share this guy, press, well before we do that, in, in the Garmin, if you import that into uh, the Garmin, uh, there will be a default label for this flight plan that you're going to up, upload. And by default, the name of it's going to be the beginning and ending waypoint that you have. So this will end up showing up on there in the Garmin catalog, the uh, flight plan catalog as K-Man to K-Man. You may have four or five or more of those in there uh, depending on the route that you flew. You want to have a special name that you want to give it. Uh, press the star there and you're going to create a favorite route name. Call it anything you want. Let's just say uh, Sorty three or something like that, and then you save it. Now, when you upload this into the Garmin, you're going to see Sorty three as the label in the uh, flight plan catalog. So let's now save this. We're going to share FPL file, and then we're going to save it to files and we're just going to put it in here and I'm going to call it something other than the default here that shows up as flight plan. Uh, I'm going to just call it sortie 3 just so it's a little bit just more descriptive if I end up creating multiple of, of these. Okay and then I'm going to save it. 
Now in my other video, I show you how to save this to an SD card and then how to go through the process of converting it with my software and how you then import it or upload it into the Garmin G1000. I hope this video uh, helps uh, um, you create a flight plan or a route in ForeFlight.